Hello, I'm Eulalia, also known as Happy Chinchilla. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my favorite techniques for creating collage papers. I like to focus more on color and texture than creating really complicated backgrounds because I feel that when I do that, I'm not able to cut them up afterwards because I have invested so much time. So these techniques that I'm going to show you are pretty easy to follow and you can use whatever you have on hand as from simple supplies that you can find at an office store to acrylic paints, but feel free to experiment and use what you already have. I cannot wait to see what you create and that's it. Let's get started. I'm going to be working on really cheap white paper. This is a bond paper. And the first technique I'm going to show you is the easiest of them all. And that is to paint, to use your acrylic paint and paint your page. Try to have different, try not to have it to be, be too perfect, too uniform. What we really want to have is a lot of texture. And now this is my palette paper where you usually mix your, your painting, but I'm going to use it as if it was a jelly plate. So I'm going to use it for monoprinting. And what I did was I added more paint and some water to make it more runny. And now these are the prints that I'm getting. And they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they're not a jelly, pay, uh, jelly plate by far, but you can kind of get pretty decent results. So this is what I'm doing right now. Wet it more or use more paint and see what happens. And I really like the results. So this is another color. This is some turquoise that I had and now I'm spreading it using a catalyst tool and you can see that there is a really big difference bef between using a paintbrush and using a catalyst tool and I like my result but I want to I wanted to have more paint so now you know that you can use your palette paper uh, for this it's actually pretty good. I like the results. I'm using a white paper to protect my working space. And that is, we're going to be using that paper as well. So everything, every little bit of paint that I'm not using, I'm cleaning it directly on that paper. And as you can see, also my catalyst tool. This is another type of paper. This is a music sheet paper and you can use whatever you have at hand, maybe old dictionary pages or old ledger papers. They're perfect for creating collage papers. Again, I'm, I'm using my catalyst tool and this time using some turquoise. And if you don't have a catalyst tool, that's perfectly fine. You can use an old credit card or something that is firm and has a flat surface will work really well. I'm going to introduce a new kind of acrylic and that is, this is high flow acrylic. You could also water down your acrylic paint and get a similar result. And here I'm using a brush and watering, watering down a little bit my paint to create some splashes and some dots. And I like having these types of papers because there's two kinds of different textures and that adds a lot of interest. And as I told you in the introduction, I'm not a big fan of creating really really complicated backgrounds because then I know I won't use it or I will feel a little bit 
not not I, I won't use it so <laughs> I prefer to have these simple papers that are more textured and color based here I'm splashing some ink and this is a colored paper so that's a great idea to have papers to use papers that already have some color and I added some drops but now I want to create some lines because I find that lines really speak to me when I'm adding collage where I'm working and playing with collage so this is a pretty thin uh, brush and I'm creating lines and as you can see those are not straight lines at all but I'm not looking for perfect lines or really straight lines I'm looking for lines and I really like the texture of that wavy feel and seeing that the thickness and th thinness changes on the line that's a lot of texture and for me is much more interesting so this is something you can do using also like the high flow acrylics or fluid acrylics or again water down your your acrylic and you can work that way and now i'm going to shake my paper to have those dots have a little more texture and have more interest don't worry i'm going to show you everything at the end so that's perfectly fine and here i didn't want to get to lose all that paint that was already on my background paper so i picked it up like i was stamping and i started adding some some lines but that didn't motivate me to continue <laughs> this is deli paper and i love working with deli paper because once you glue it down it becomes almost in invisible so i'm working with black and created more lines i actually worked on the wrong side of the paper so my lines my my paint is not getting completely it's not dark enough you can see here the big difference between working on one side of the paper and the other i don't know how to differentiate them unless i start working and i see that's not working so i'm going to let the other lines that way and also have these ones and having neutral papers that means that are colors that are neutral like white or black or black and white or beige or all that color of old paper it's really important because that will give you some grounding grounding space to have with your collage and now i decided to make this instead of having the lines horizontal vertical lines i made a hash mark and i really love it and i love how it looks when it's next to other papers and what i love as i told you this paper becomes almost invisible once it's glued down so so having these textures is pretty great and here i started using the nozzle of my acrylic paint to add marks and i liked it so i continue using my brush to create similar markings again this is the paper where things are not sticking very well but it also adds a very interesting finishing it's not perfect it's more translucent and it has much more texture so don't think something is a mistake just because it's not the way you thought it would it would turn out to be and now using my paint marker I'm adding lines and as you can see I am letting I'm starting outside my paper 
And that is one of the reasons that I tend to have papers as my as something that will protect my working space because I'm very messy. I really don't want to be careful uh, about where the paint goes or how my table is looking. So I prefer to have this and then it becomes the perfect collage paper because it wasn't, I didn't invest time. I didn't think things out. It sort of happened. So I love those papers. And here, this is me playing with my paint markers. And if you don't like something, you don't have to keep doing it. For example, these tiny lines, I started making them and then I got bored. It's too much. So don't worry about having an entire, entire page uh, made out of the same line if you're not enjoying what's happening. Now this paint marker, the tip got ruined, but now it's perfect for mark making. And I'm using it basically as a, as a kind of a stamp. These are highlighters. These are from the office, from, for offices. And the thing about this is that they're translucent and they have a very they have beautiful colors, or I at least I love, absolutely adore all these fluorescent and neon colors. But they're translucent and they come in great colors. And now I'm making something else. And what I want to do here, what I want to make here is a striped paper. I also love having striped papers because whenever I'm adding details, this becomes very interesting. So that was that. Now this are, I'm using gelatos. These are some water soluble crayons. They're very, very runny. And if I were to use them this way as collage, they would uh, smudge and everything would be, would get really, not good. So what I found that works really well for me is to add a layer of gel meat. No, this is matte medium. I'm uh, adding a little bit of matte medium. I'm using my catalyst and adding it on top. And what happens is that now all my water soluble elements or all my water soluble tools will get uh, sealed and I can work with them without worrying that they're going to smudge or that anything is going to happen. They're not going to move. I also get a little bit of texture because the gel medium, the matte medium and the catalyst tool pick up some of that paint, but that's perfectly fine. And here in this tiny bit of paper, I started to work with pastels with these are soft pastels. And what happens with them is the same thing that happens with the water soluble tools and supplies. And that is that they move and they smudge and they will stain everything else. So if I add this layer, of the matte medium, they are going to stay in place. And you can get really beautiful textures when you're working with the soft pastels. And this is a way to work with them and not have to worry about them smudging or getting everywhere. Especially uh, soft pastels, they the dust goes everywhere. So I painted this and now I'm adding the matte medium, some catalyst tool to go over, and that's it. I don't kill, no, I, I'm sorry, I don't clean my catalyst tool, and that is, that is why you see so much mixture in colors, but you can, of course, you can clean it. Now, these are handmade stamps. They are made out of erasers and I cut them out. 
And the great things about these stamps is that you can use them with heavy body acrylic and they start to get really, well, a little bit gross because they get different layers of paint if you don't clean them immediately and I don't do that so they get really messy but they still work and what I love about them is that if they're if I ruin them it's perfectly fine because I can make another one and I can use these heavy body acrylics without fearing that it's going to destroy my stamp so when I made this I was thinking that they could become a pattern and that's why I have them like the same leaf, leaves or botanical motif I have it in different shapes look and see if you have any stamps that are either handmade by yourself or handmade and that you can use to create a pattern with. I like using similar colors, so I usually use maybe a red with a pink, or in this case, blue with purple, or yellow with orange, and I like the look of that tone on tone uh, pattern. In fact, this pattern, if you take my class you will see that I used for one of the exercises you don't have to completely cover the page you can just have half of it or just a piece of it I wanted to have at least half of the page so the pattern could when I cut it out it could be seen and now this is a store-bought stamp and it's really beautiful and in this case instead of using acrylic I'm using the the ink or the yeah the ink that they suggest you use with them and I don't have a lot of stamps I don't have a lot of colors stamping colors or ink colors so I'm using what I have and that is black but I'm sure some of you might have a lot of different colors so try to make a pattern using something that is tone on tone and I'm cleaning my stamp on my background because I know that is going to work out at the end this is another tool that is not use as much in the mixed media art community and that is a ballpoint pen it gives a really beautiful line it's very thin and very it doesn't have a tech a lot of texture so you can create really intricate designs and lines that when you cut them out and add them to the collage, to a collage, they work really well. So I created first some horizontal lines and now I'm making some arcs. And I know when I cut this out, they are going to look pretty interesting because that line, the line that you can make with a ballpoint paint pen is really beautiful, very delicate and it has it adds a lot of texture you really don't need to make or to try all of these techniques I would love to have you have this class inspire you to at least try one of the things that I'm showing you here there is a lot of things maybe you have a tool that you haven't tried but maybe making some marks with it will create something really interesting this for example is a, a a common marker this is a felt tip marker and i'm adding those arc arches just to see how they look 
And this is, of course, not white paper. This is a craft paper that also looks great when used in collage because it is kind of a neutral color. And now I'm going to make another striped uh, paper. Uh, and in this case, I will be using my paint markers. And try not to have all your lines the same width. So some of them might be thin, some thicker, make, uh, paint them closer or more far apart. And that creates a very interesting stripe that is also actually a pattern. The thing is we're not seeing the repeat, but this is a pattern. We're using the same colors and the same and we're also using lines, but they're different lines. So this creates this pattern. Try working with colors you enjoy. That That is something that I would suggest to you. Don't keep your favorite colors all locked up like I used to do because I was always afraid that I was going to use my favorite color and it's and it was going to run out and i wasn't able to get it again but it's better to work with the tools that you enjoy the colors that you enjoy it's better to use them than to have them locked up so this color combination i really love it's pink it's aqua it's blue and some little the um little touches of violet and really light pink and this is it this is the paper i really like how it looks and now my background paper the one that i have been abusing all this time and now it's time to start working on it so adding more touches adding some of the tools or all of the tools we used before plus a few more that i didn't use because the techniques are pretty simple the ones that i'm showing you but i think what is different is the way you will use it when you collage and here i've been using so far paint markers but the the marks i've made are different some are lines some dots some marks and now these are color ball paint ball point pens sorry and i'm making big marks and all over the page and there is no rhyme or reason i just want to try it out these are colored pencils i also adding them randomly all over the place and this is going to create a wonderful collage paper but I didn't spend a lot of time making it or thinking about it it actually most of it happened on its own when I was cleaning my brushes and uh, getting rid of the excess paint that I had on my catalyst tool or on my palette paper and again this is the catalyst tool Use all the, any and all the, the tools that you have available. And at this last moment is the perfect time to use things that you thought you might use, but you never did. And this is what's happening right now. I had this yellow and I was thinking I could use it somewhere. I never did, but here it looks great. So I'm splashing it. I'm adding color to some places and I'm not really worried about the final outcome because the outcome is to have something. I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm not overthinking how things are looking, if the composition is looking good. I'm just having fun adding marks. And these are oil pastels. They're really thick and creamy. So it's best to leave them for the last layer.
I'm going to show you each of the papers. So this was with paint markers. This was the ballpoint pen and felt pen, stamps, handmade and commercially bought. This is actually the palette paper that you can also rip out and use for your collage. This is acrylic paint, not my favorite. These are the highlighters. They look great in real life more paint marker and a lot of lines acrylic paint on top of the palette paper and using the music sheets more palette paper print using this time a craft paper splashing of paint and lines this one looks absolutely beautiful i love it that's from the uh, paint palette these are little splashes don't like them <laughs> uh, this is more paint palette love the textures i love the textures and this was one this one was made using only my paintbrush this is using catalyst tool these are the gelatos and now they're completely set and they don't move the uh, soft pastels again they don't move they're stuck there which I love and these are the deli papers and I'm going to use a paper so you can see them better it's the same actually but this worked perfectly when as a last layer when you're working with collage using them on top of everything it's absolutely great and finally here's the paper that I use to protect my my table and it's really great very crazy very full of colors but I didn't invest a lot of time or a lot of thought so I won't have any problem cutting it out and remember that all of these papers that I made I'm thinking that I'm going to use them for collage there is a final destination they're not made just because i like to use what i create and i like them to have some kind of purpose in this case in this case it's they're going to be collage i really hope you enjoyed this video and i cannot wait to see what you create I really hope to see you in my class, Mixed Media Collage, where I will show you a bunch of techniques on how to use the papers that we just created. There are seven different lessons, it's almost six hours long, and it was made with the wonderful people over at Everything Art UK. So check the description 